Good morning and welcome to the Eden United Methodist Church service, live and live stream from beautiful downtown Eden, New York. I'm Jim Monroe. I've got a couple of announcements this morning. Today's second Sunday, so it's a loose coin collection for the Heifer Project, and the container is on the back table. Today is soup sale also for $7 a quart. There's some out on the table. I imagine some's claimed already, and hopefully there's some extra for people. And we have uh, noon, at, noon Tuesday is Turning Point Job Fair. Um, uh, open interviews for the Turning Point House in Eden, New York, job opportunities in all departments. There's a little brochure in your uh, sleeve in your bulletin for that. And whether it's Monday morning Bible study, Monday morning Bible study at 9.30, okay. And then on Wednesday at noontime is a prayer meeting with Pastor Kate. And then Thursday morning at 7 a.m. is the Bible study at the Four Corners with Pastor Lutz and Pastor Kate. And birthdays. Lori LeBaron has got a birthday on the 12th, and Mike Forrester is on the 10th. me I didn't turn it on uh, SPRC uh, is going to meet both virtually and in person because we've got some members in quarantine right now so that is a seven o'clock meeting if you have the link and you need to use it it's in your email just use it but that's seven o'clock on Tuesday in the memorial room both <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so our first hymn I got oh. our first hymn is uh, oh worship the king all glorious above it's number 73 in the maroon book please stand if able Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, 
illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshiped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Will the children come forward? Connor, you have a you have a special job. You gotta come. Grab Andrew while you're at it.
Hello, children. How are you guys? What do you have in your hand? He's got a cup of Play-Doh because I asked him to grab one. That was his job to make sure that we had some Play-Doh. What do you like to do with Play-Doh? You like to build stuff with it? I think the only thing I ever was really good at with Play-Doh was making it into a ball. So what is it that you like to use it for? I'm changing up the program, sorry. <laughs> Got it? Okay. Try it again. Sculpting stuff. There we go. We can do this. Okay, so what can you make out of that? Oh, you're going to make a worm? I told you, the only thing I know how to make with these things is a, is a ball. And, and I have to do it one-handed, so it's really, really hard. But it's kind of fun, because it's it, especially when it's like this. This is the soft stuff. Sometimes Play-Doh can be the really hard stuff. Right, Opal? You have to give it back when I ask, OK? There you go. So when it's the squishy stuff, you can kind of make it into different things. Like Connor's, that's a snail. Look, he made a snail. What do you have, Jack? What did you make? Oh, he's got, he's got a, is it a worm? No? It's a what? A taco. A taco. That's sweet. <laughs> Don't eat it. So we can make all sorts of things out of Play-Doh. The, the one of the scripture passages we're going to read today set, it talks about how God shapes and forms us. Do you think that he shaped and formed us out of Play-Doh? Because <laughs> that'd be kind of silly. What if the world was a bunch of Play-Doh people? Can you picture it, Jack? I can. I mean, I've, I've got a, it, it kind of looks a little weird. But it says that when God created us, he formed us. Like you formed the Play-Doh. You see that? That God forms us, and he forms us so that we can share his love, and it shapes us so we can share his love with others. Oh, you did, oh, you did what Uncle Connor did, didn't you? Look at that. So, when you play with Play-Doh the next time, I want you to think about how God shaped and formed each of you. And I find this really strange, because you're all blonde and blue-eyed. I was hoping for a little bit more variation. Hey, Jack, thank you for the brown hair. And the brown eyes, yes. A little bit more va variation there. But God shapes us and forms us in different ways. And not everybody has blonde hair, right? Uh, unlike this crew, right? Not <laughs> we, we all look a little bit different, but the one thing that we all have in common is that God makes us in the ways that he does so that we can share his love with others. So let's say a prayer. And then I'm going to collect the Play-Doh back into the jar. Got it? But you can hold on to it until after the prayer. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for these children, and we pray that you would continue to enable us to share with them what it means to be loved and forgiven by you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's do... For the Bible tells me so, little ones... This one's live.
Come here. I got it now. Is it that? Okay. For the record, everything got rearranged for the Christmas pageant. So we're just getting back to normal now. All right. <clears throat> Israel's only savior, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, and he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for for your life. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. And I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Good morning. I haven't asked you to do this one in a while. I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of the gospel, if you are able. So our gospel reading is from the, the gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into its barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, may our hearts and minds be open to what you would have us learn this day, that we would grow in your grace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So today is the second Sunday in the season of the Epiphany, and it happens to be something called Baptism of the Lord. You all recognize the font out here, right? We're not baptizing anybody today, and as I was sitting there thinking about all the COVID regulations, I realized we probably shouldn't do what I was going to have us do either. Maybe I should have thought that through a little bit more, but I didn't. Because what I wanted to do was to invite you to come forward when you received communion and, and do the remembrance of baptism, but then you're all touching the same water, and then you're taking your communion elements. This is what I was thinking of while people were reading scripture and talking, just so you know. This is what was going through my head. I think I need to do it differently. Okay, so don't touch the water when you come for the elements. Got it? <laughs> because this is the world we currently live in, isn't it? Like We have to change things around, do things a little bit differently, and it's consistent, it's constant, and I feel like 
I, my brain has more agility now than when this all started. Because new problems and ways of having to experience and do things come up pretty consistently. But, but baptism of the Lord Sunday is always, by the way, it is always the first Sunday after we celebrate the Epiphany. Now, I heard there was some confusion last week about when to celebrate Epiphany. Is, is that right? Or was that just a story that was made up? Okay, we're going to go with uh, that was right. So the Epiphany, Epiphany Sunday is always celebrated the closest to the 6th as possible, but that's not exactly what we did, is it? And when it gets confusing like that, and Epiphany is always January 6th, because that is the 12th day of Christmas, where in some cultures that is actually when Christmas is celebrated. But we celebrate the arrival of the three kings, the wise men, at the stable to witness, well, not they didn't actually arrive at the stable, but who arrived and witnessed the birth of, of they didn't even witness the birth of Jesus, my goodness. You would think I didn't prep what I was going to say this morning, but I promise I did. When the wise men arrived and witnessed that Jesus, the Lord, their Lord, had been born. That's Epiphany Sunday. And the Sunday after Epiphany Sunday is always baptism of the Lord. Now, that passage from Luke may have seemed a bit familiar. I hope it did, because we read bits and pieces of it throughout the season of Advent. We read two different texts from it in, in the month of December. That was my favorite part, remember? You brood of vipers, that part's not in there. That, that, that's a part of this text. You brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath that is coming. I'm just going to use it every time I can get away with it, just so you know. Like, if I can put that into a sermon, I'm just going to, it just, it, there, it's, it's, it's filled with so, so much emotion. And, and I get that it's, it's a line in, that's said to call us comfortable Christians out of our comfort and into a true understanding and right relationship with God. I mean, that's what John was trying to do as he stood out in the desert and he offered people forgiveness for their sins if they would come forward and repent and receive just this baptism of water. But John, as he's supposed to, points ahead to Jesus. And he says, you know what? All I have is this water that I can clean you with, and this water isn't good enough to clean you all the way. It's just symbolic. The water is just symbolic. So wait for that moment when Jesus comes, and then when Jesus finally comes down to the water, the heavens are open, and there's a physical manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. And as it comes down and rests near Jesus, you can hear the voice of the Lord saying, this is my beloved, this is my son, this is the one in whom I am well pleased, this is the one who has come to offer forgiveness for sin for all of creation to the world in Jesus. And John says, my only responsibility was to point the way to Jesus. Now, as I was looking through the text for this week, one of the things that caught my attention more than anything was that text from Isaiah. Because along with the promise that John offered people, that there was one who was coming that was greater than him, one who would offer us true forgiveness for our sins, one who could cleanse us in a way that nothing else could, that passage from Isaiah is, is, is a lead-up promise. It's, it's a way of saying to the people of Israel pretty much the same thing that John said. And we were talking in Sunday school earlier today and realized that that idea, you've heard these words before, fear not, right? When you think of fear not, which scripture verses do you go to? There's so many, right? Fear not, for the Lord is with you. Fear not, for I, your God, am with you. It's all throughout the prophets. It's all throughout. It's even said to those shepherds in the field when the angels came and spoke to them, fear not. God has a way of using that idea in those words to speak to his people when he comes. Because when his presence is near, if you'll notice, most of the time the stories are all about how the people are afraid. They're confused. They don't know what to do, that God has come near them. I love the story of Moses going up to the top of, the, of Mount Sinai because when he gets up there and he has this perfect conversation with God and comes back down, he is so radiating the glory of God that he has to cover his face because it's too much for the people to handle. Can you imagine that? It was too much. 
for the people of God to handle that amount of God's presence with them. So Isaiah says to the people of Israel, but now this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, who formed you, Israel, do not fear. You heard that, right? Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not set you ablaze. Are you picturing this? The water doesn't overwhelm. The flames don't overtake because God, our God, has called us to walk a particular path. And as we walk that particular path, God walks with us regardless of how many times we turn away from the love that he offers to each and every one of us. The love that he offers to us, not just in that moment when the church comes together and promises to raise a child in the faith and be, make them a member of the body of Christ, but Throughout our lives, God continues to walk with us, offering his Holy Spirit to enable us to understand more clearly who and what God is and how he has called us to live. As I was reading through that text from Isaiah and, and that picture of the dove descending on Jesus, what I saw was light. Not just light, but overwhelming light. When you read in the book of Revelation, it says that the people stand before the throne, they stand in the kingdom and there is no need <clears throat> for all this artificial light because God's glory radiates at the center of the New Jerusalem. This is the kind of radiating light that Moses brings down to the people. This is the kind of radiating light that Jesus is offering through the Holy Spirit. Yes, this is the kind of radiating light that God is offering each and every one of us because when he created us, formed us, shaped us, made us, our purpose was to radiate, to share his glory, his glory with others. Now, one of the things about sharing God's glory with others is the fact that we are human beings. We make mistakes. We do things that we ought not do. We say things that we ought not say. And one of those things that goes through my head, and when I have one of those moments where I've said something I ought not to have said, ever done that? Man... I'm going to have to apologize for that one, right? Who loves apologizing? Nobody raised their hand. I don't like apologizing. It's hard, right? You have to, first of all, you have to admit, I did something wrong, right? I caused someone pain. These are, these, these are not easy things to do. But when Jesus offers us forgiveness, when God offers us that redeeming love, what he's saying is, I'm offering you that forgiveness even when you can't figure out how much harm you have caused. When you turn away from me and are unable to share my glory with others as I've created you to do. I was kind of stuck in that place of, well, I know I haven't necessarily done what is right, and I know that it says in Scripture that I'm supposed to be an example, and that it also says that I'm supposed to glorify God in the way that I live, because the purpose of our lives as ones who glorify, whose lives glorify God, our purpose, our purpose is to do that while we are in right relationship with God. When we are in right relationship with God, then our lives should be that example over and over again, except for those moments when we turn away. And it's easy to get stuck on those moments when we turn away, when we have failed and say, you know what, I don't need to go back, I don't need to change, I don't want to, right? And sometimes we recognize it and we jump for it and we say, Lord, forgive me, I want to get back out there and I want to be the one who is a reflection of your love, a reflection of your glory, a reflection of your mercy at work in this world. I was talking with a friend the other day on the phone and she said something to me that, I don't, guys, I've, I've been sitting with this for a bit. I stopped going to church. This is what she said to me. I stopped. I know she's not watching, by the way, because she stopped going to church years ago. I stopped going to church because when I got there, no one said anything to me. And I was like, well, that's kind of a selfish, like, you got to come to me thing, right? 
And I was like, well, it's about more than that. No, it wasn't just about that. It was about the fact that nobody would come and talk to me, but it was also the fact that you could hear them gossip all around on a Sunday morning as they didn't talk to her. You've never done that, right? Okay, maybe you haven't. Maybe you've been perfect and said no bad words about another human being ever, right? But she said, I, I just couldn't keep going because it was like the words that you would hear from Scripture, it was like they fell on deaf ears, that no one was actually living out this life that's supposed to glorify God. Instead, what she saw were choices made out of selfishness and greed, choices, choices made out of well, I'm better than you because I have this kind of stuff. And I have to be honest with you, most of the world views the church that way. How many of you have friends who have said things like, well, you guys are all a bunch of hypocrites anyway, right? When God calls us to be the people that glorify him, to live lives that bring glory to God, it is about how we live that life in right relationship with God. And it does come with a price. That price is the life of Christ sacrificed for us. That call is the ability to learn, learn and live as one who has been forgiven and redeemed by God and to see that each and every person around us is also formed, shaped, created by God in need of God's forgiveness and love. And as we radiate God in the way we live our lives, we hope that they can hear it and come in, but it takes a great deal of humility to do it well, to recognize when I may not have done something I ought to. I, I want to say that the most powerful witness we can give isn't about making sure that people have food and clothing and things like that, though those are extraordinarily important. One of the most important things that we can show the world is how to confess when we've messed up, how to seek forgiveness and to restore a relationship when it is broken because when you look at the world today it is pretty clear that that is a really really hard thing to do i hate public apologies i'm going to tell you why because they're never ever authentic or pretty rarely okay i know there are some out there because the person will come on and will say i'm sorry if i caused you any pain is there any responsibility being taken in that statement I want you to think about that. There's, there isn't. That, that's not what God has asked. That's not how God has asked us to live humbly before him. What he's asked us to do is to say, I messed up. My actions caused pain and hurt. And I recognize that if I say I'm sorry, that I need to admit those things too. And that when I say I'm sorry and admit those things, then... I'm showing the world, I'm setting the example and showing them that we follow and serve a God that walks with us no matter the circumstance, who is with us in the water and the fires of life. Because we know that we, we know that we do not need to fear him. We know that he is with us, walks with us. And he loves us so much that it, it shouldn't be a problem for us to say I messed up, and I want to turn back, and I want my life to glorify God better than it does in this moment. That's the kind of example that God has called us to live into. That is the purpose for which we were created and called into this body of Christ. And when we practice that ritual of baptism, bringing in new people into the body of Christ. Our job is to continue to share and show those new individuals what it means, not just to be loved and forgiven by God, but how to build a life in right relationship with God that radiates God's glory to the world around us. How different would church look if our focus was about radiating God's glory? If we understood what it meant to humbly stand before our creator who made us, who shaped us, who formed us and offers us forgiveness. I think ultimately we would look a little different. Maybe that's because we'd all have halos. You know, the, the, what the angels have in the, no? 
But if you've ever met that individual Christian that just seems to be different from the other ones around you, there's just something different about them because you know that there is a very real and authentic relationship with God there. God has said that each and every one of us has the potential to be that person. And that when we do it together as the body of Christ, we have the power to transform the world around us. So may our prayer this week, each day, be, may my life radiate your glory, God. Amen? Our next hymn is How Firm a Foundation. It's number in the Rune Book. Please stand fable. I am here to uh, share with you the joys and concerns that we have in our church family. <clears throat> I, and ordinarily, when we, if we said a joy, we'd say, Lord, for blessings, hear our praise. And we'd, for concerns, we'd say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. My, I have some um, issues that I've, people that I've heard about over the emails, but they're somewhat dated. And so I don't see, so I'm going to do a little detective work and find that names are missing from the joys and concerns list of people we're praying for. And one comes to mind immediately because uh, also on uh, emails and uh, the other computer sources, I note the absence of a, of a uh, very young face who is no longer there. And for me, that's great. His name begins with D. And I was trying to remember it, but I found the original notice was December 22nd, and his name is Declan. Declan is no longer there for 
And so we can maybe perhaps assume from that that that's clearly a joy. Amen. And so, Lord, for your blessing, hear our, hear our praise. praise. Um, I, and that is, that's the limit of the ones that I know about. Are there any that he, anyone care to bring up that we, need, that we know to be in need of prayer? Uh, Carol. They're all safe? Sick. F sick. Oh, they're all sick. So this is a concern. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you. Are there others? If not, then perhaps I could cover it <clears throat> that we are sending prayers for all those around the world who are in some way suffering or going through life's trials. May God be with each of you and surround you in his light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father God, we gather this morning as unclean people, and we know it. We hope for better for ourselves, but seem to lack fortitude in our faith. Our desires are not always appropriate and are too often alien to the image of Jesus by which he instructs us all to live. Our lives are not always ordered, suffering from a lack of purposeful priority. Our actions are not always constructive as we allow ourselves to respond too much and too often to the temporary materiality of our troubled world. And too little on the permanent and peaceful spirituality that is your promise of eternity through sincere belief in Jesus the Christ. Remind us when we stray from our sacred baptism into the body of Christ. Strengthen us to live up our, to our part of the baptismal covenant of this of this gift, this Holy Spirit gift, to each and every one of us. Lord, you put your spirit into our hearts, and ours is but to accept him and do what he says and focus on what he's saying. Help us to acknowledge receipt of this gift and to call upon the Holy Spirit that lives within us in all things in our lives. Through the presence of your spirit, free us from all that is negative past and empower us for all that awaits in an, event, in an eventually positive future. Let us always remember, if not the detail, at least the significance of our baptism. And in faithful humility, let us always be grateful. And in one thing, help us to be strong in our faith and to not quit. Don't quit. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing and you're down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And when you never can tell how close you are, it may be near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not quit. Now let us faithfully join in saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. I wasn't able to be with you last week, so we're going to do communion this week. Though, to be honest, before COVID, we would have been doing communion today no matter what. Because it was my goal for us to celebrate on feast day, and baptism of the Lord is that. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. The confession is in your hymnal. 12. 12. Yeah. Merciful God, Amen. we confess Christ, that we, we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, have we have failed to be an obedient church. church. We, have we have not, not done, done your will. will. We, have we have broken, broken your law. law. We, we have, have rebelled, rebelled against your love, not loved our neighbors, neighbors and, we, and have we have not heard, heard the cry of the needy. needy. Forgive us, we pray, free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sure. Amen. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name Jesus of Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now is the time to give back some of what God has given us. Do that through the website, and uh, you can hit on the Tidely app, the donor box, the PayPal button, or scan the QR code. stand a fable. Father, please accept these thy gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You got your hymnals out now? Okay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift them up to the Lord. We lift them up to the Lord. <laughs> lift up, sorry. <laughs> we'll start again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, where you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. 
You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with the people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of, of power and might, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, in whom you revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. In his baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he took, on, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen, Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, with your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Come forward and receive what you are called to be, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. It is my bread, just so you know. Come forward and receive. Please try to follow the, the signs on the floor where it says, mask on, keep it on, where it tells you you can take it off and receive, take it off there. Come forward and receive what you are called to be. I first need the servers. <laughs> It'll be more comfortable with the juice of the bread.
come forward and receive what you are called to be, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. I think we sing a song now, don't we? Yes, yes. I'm losing track these days. You're going to have to remind me some more, Jim. <laughs> Our next hymn is number 277. It is Please stand if able. your light say I mean your uh, full six we're not quite there yet so I put this font out because this is supposed to be when you remember your baptism or remember the promises made at your baptism and then I realized I really probably shouldn't cross contaminate water and bread so here's the thing it's full of water I'm gonna open it if you feel moved to come down and touch the water and remember your baptism you are more than welcome to do so if you think that's the scariest thing you could possibly do because it's COVID I understand there's nothing wrong with that. It's as you wish. So, as we go forth into this world, God continues to call us and then equip us to be those who glorify him in all that we do, to live humbly before our God and the world. May you know that he walks with you no matter life's circumstances and gives you the ability to share his glory with others. So go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now you can take those noodles if you want to. And grab the new upper room, too, on your way out. There's a bunch of them back there in the narthex. Mm -hmm.